Hello, beat freaks and pillow talkers. We're back. Season two of Pillow Talk, Sin in the City. It's me, one of your favorite beat freaks, Mrs. Jackson, if you nasty. And of course, you know I brought my girl along. What's your name, love bug? It's Lady Truth. I'm back. Hi, you guys. It's been a while, but we're back. And super tired. Early Very morning, tired. <laughs> but we had to get back to our people because we missed you. So as promised, we're here. And today we're talking about, um, I guess you could say, how to find and balance love with success in the city and the corporate world. Um, and is it even possible? Is it possible? I Especially mean, Especially living in a city like Las Vegas. I guess we have to say it's possible because we're both possible. married business women in it's the city. It's hard. But it's possible. But it was a road to get there, was it not? Oh, boy. <laughs> no, it was. And I did a lot of reflections this morning. But I, I see a lot of posts um, just throughout the years. Um, my fellow Las Vegas people or even my people that live in any major city, a lot of them are saying that, like, there's no love here. I, or I need to move to the country or so. Like, does that mean the slow life equals love? Lots Is it of the love fast the paced life that, like, doesn't equal love? Well, we're here to tell y'all, you guys, it is possible. You just have to know how to balance. You have to. Yeah, because in this city, with the industry and the workers, <laughs> the different types of workers that we have. It's workers in the country, too. Yeah. They just don't charge as much. Yeah, yeah. And their hours are kind of restricted because, you know, they close at 12 <laughs> and we close at like 3, 4, 5 in the morning. So, I mean, and this is Our workers never close. You need a worker at 6 a.m., honey. She going to be there. Or he going to be there. All day. Any time of day. But that, that <laughs> adds to the issue, you know, is the busy schedule and and in this city, especially in this city, everything's fast paced and about the money and about being success and coming up and getting it. So instead we're traded in, you know, our dating and our romance and our chivalry and our going out to breakfast for breakfast after the club, followed by, you know, a one night stand that we're trying to forget ASAP. And that's, I don't know, fortunately or unfortunately. It's that instant gratification. Like, um, I used to like instant gratification. I didn't need no feelings, no attachments. You ain't even got to call me no more. Don't text me good morning. We're not even on that same level. But um, that that's the bad thing, though. And I'm, I'm so thankful I grew out of that and embraced love because it's, it's definitely worth it. But then I have some associates that do not want that love. They don't want the relationship. They don't want the marriage. They don't want that family life. They just want to work hard be successful, get money, and have sex when they need it. See, so we're having sex like, like men? Is that, what, is that what it is? Women are starting to be that way now. They're starting to realize that a lot of our men don't want the relationship, so why should they? Mm. They're trying to, but as women, we're emotional creatures anyway, so That's we can't help but to have that one experience with that man that absolutely wants nothing to do with you after this moment. And we're going to get emotionally attached and then we're going to have to, exactly. (laughs) And then that's going to make us, these women everybody talks about are bitter and crazy and everything else. And you're going to understand as women, we are emotional. Is it possible to really have sex without emotions? I guess. I have. Well, you know, in the day and age that we are with, with all these women bossing up and becoming financially independent, I guess it is. No, it's it's absolutely possible. We're switching the dating roles. I'm seeing more bitch assness coming from men (laughs) who knew what it was going into the situation. And now they're being clingy and stalking Facebooks and all in your DM cussing you out because you're not answering their phone call or their text messages. You you ignoring people? Screenshots are horrible because I'm seeing a lot of women just putting men out there on on blast. Blast him 2018. (laughs) Is this your nigga? Get him out my inbox. Get him. Sis, (laughs) sis, come get your man. I've seen so many posts. Sis. Who man is this? Right. Come All get in him, my please. inbox. Who is this guy? That no. is hilarious. No. That's hilarious. But I mean, even um, reverting back to um, one of our shows that we enjoy watching, which is where we get a lot of our content from, but Sex in the City, that show was full of successful women who struggled with relationships. Yeah. They had a lot of issues with holding on to that love. Now, where was it based? In a big city. Yeah. What were they doing? Corporate work or their own business work and their relationships suffered 
because of it. So why do you think that women who are living these fulfilling lives and who are successful are alone? Like, what is it? I think there's a lot of insecure men. Um, There's a lot of men that don't understand that you don't necessarily have to make more than your woman. You don't have to have this spotlight career. It's okay to let your woman have the spotlight. Look at Oprah. they, They feel threatened. Well, you know, Stedman, I don't know. I think Oprah really would gale. Well, I mean, she got both. She got, you know, (laughs) she decided to boss up and have, you know, her Her cake cake and eat it too. too. So (laughs) it is what it is. I ain't mad at Oprah. Shout out to Oprah. That's my girl. Y'all know I love me some Oprah. The the queen boss. (laughs) But I'm just saying it's, it's okay. Like, for example, me and you, we are constantly on the move in the spotlight in different forms. And our um, spouses, they're just chilling. I mean, my husband's a teacher. He's not just your everyday regular teacher. He is a great teacher, but he's not on social media. He's not doing promotions. He's not doing any. He's just chilling. He's just living his regular everyday Coach Taylor, Mr. Taylor life. See, my wife is similar. So let me ask you this. Since you're the opposite, you use social media and all of that a lot to promote your brand and Mm -hmm. build your business. So it does take a lot of time. And I've heard that social media can be the death of a lot of relationships, it causes a lot of drama. How does it affect your relationship? How do you balance the two with success, it, social media, and a relationship? It only affected it when I did not take the time to explain to him why I'm on it so okay. much. So we had to have this conversation, but now he sees my content. Mm-hmm. He sees that it is going into my brand. Mm-hmm. He sees that in order for me to get followers, listeners, um, team um prospects or whatever i have to be this social media it it is it's real y'all like it really is an asset to business depending on what you do but it's definitely an asset because everybody is on social media i see people talking about their grandparents have social media so it's it's definitely big but you have to balance work you have to balance your own personal self and if you're with someone you have to find time for sex yeah like, I don't care if it's penciled in on the I calendar. I mean, real life business women you schedule have, sex. You have to. And yeah. it, it's like people are like, you're not supposed to schedule sex. It's supposed to be organic. It doesn't happen Sometimes organically all the it, time. You just got to get it done. Because if you're both dead tired, but you look on that calendar and it's like, all right, babe, it's been like three days. That's coffee in itself. We need though. to go ahead and work it out. Yeah, it'll be tired at first and you'll feel like you don't want to do it. But, honey. Girl, the best part of once waking you get up into is it, KC in your cup. Exactly. Hey. Once you get into it, then <laughs> your body will respond. And if it doesn't, you might yeah. want to go see a doctor. Yes. But um, there are many a nights where I am dead tired and I'm the aggressor. I'm like, all right, babe, come on. I'm no, I'm man, eyes hurting body aching i'm tired as i don't know what i took that shower and just want to go to bed Girl. Mm-mm, mm-mm, nope it's been too many days come on boo let's go wings. forget red bull and he'd be like i thought <laughs> she was tired don't even worry about my sleep I, i'm gonna get it we're gonna get this but let's go fuck you back to sleep. i'm gonna have some better sleep let's go hey. <laughs> <laughs> but i think that's also um what men have a problem with is because they don't want to be penciled in yeah they don't want to have to fit into your schedule They want to be the schedule. You know, I've heard that. And I've also heard that I guess it can go both ways. They're intimidated by a woman with with her business, Um, an independent woman. They want a boss. You know, you want this boss bitch but then when that you everybody get her, talks about. But when you get her, you're not ready to deal with you're all ready to that ship comes her ass with back. it. Um, insecurities. Um, do, do you think it has to do with insecurities? Or, or- I, I absolutely believe that it's insecurities. And then also, if she's a boss in the public eye and she's a boss in the bedroom, he's like, well, what am I supposed to do? So play it. Let me tell you a couple things. First thing, <laughs> step, step your sex game up. Truth. Go ahead and um, if you got to watch a few pornos or, I mean, talk to your boys. I don't know what, what y'all do. Self-help books. They got them but, all. But uh, learn some new things. When she come home from a boss-ass day, she tired. Ain't nothing wrong with running a lady her bath water. Rubber feet. Or even just starting her shower. If she's not a bath person. Me, Baby, I don't like to sit in my own dirt like that. So I'm not big on baths. Right? I got to absolutely be in the mood for a bath. Like you just So pim- start my shower for shit. me. I can't stand you. <laughs> have have the bell bed pill back. Let me know. We getting in this bed after you get out the shower. 
Sometimes I come home, Mr. Taylor got the candles lit. I know what time it is. Yes. That's that, that light he left on for me. <laughs> so there's nothing wrong with you switching the roles because yeah. she will, she'll reward you. Let me just put it that way. She I was about to say a whole lot more. She will reward you. <laughs> well, you know, we unfiltered. You could have said it all. I'm just but. saying, if you ain't never had your dick stuck from the back, it might happen that night. No, 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 no. <laughs> well, on, on your hands. <laughs> I don't know, do you? She says she you can lick eat pussy my from shit. the back you can too. Lead it from the back too. Absolutely, because that ain't feels never, amazing. Like ever had nothing like that ever happened to me? I'm like, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> yes, y'all <laughs> gonna say yes. You have. You know, Lying I have. It goes down. It goes down. It goes down. So you said gender roles being flipped, and that's absolutely true. You know, and sometimes we do have to switch it up. But I guess that brings me to the next topic I want to touch on. As we get older. And, you know, when we were younger, we were out bop bopping, having fun. You know, it wasn't so much emphasis on settling down. Mm-hmm. But as we reach our mid-30s, we reach that baby-making stage, and we're ready to settle down and have families and do all of that. So I've heard that at that point there is a, a power switch, and men then get the power. And power of the pussy um, – Falls Fades to the away. wayside by, you know, power of the ovaries. We, we need to get these babies. It's time to settle. And then as we get older, we become more selective because we're in that nesting phase. So do you think as we get older, because it's time to settle down, we start to narrow down our selections and we become a little bit too picky? He's too fat. He's too yes. short. He don't make enough money. Yeah. Look at his teeth. No, teeth are important. Oh, yeah. Never take that's that off why, your list, that's ladies. That's why I mentioned it. Ne- never take it off. <laughs> Our fellas. My fellas, too. Te- teeth is important. A, a woman's teeth or a man's teeth tells you a lot about them. I'm just going to say teeth are important. Don't scratch that off. But um, a lot of bosses, whether it's no, because men will sometimes just take the little waitress in a coffee shop and be like, I could show you a whole new world because they're in that position of power. With women, we are looking for that man that matches our swag, our matches, our hustle, our matches, our income. So you're saying we're looking for the perfect man? We we are. We do it a lot. Um, but I need you to understand. And I'm going to revert back to my girl, Oprah. Stedman was regular as fuck. Hmm. And she was okay with his regular ass. Yeah. Because she was like, I'm going to be okay regardless. So let me show you a let whole new world. Let me upgrade you. And it, it wasn't even, and I don't even think because of the type of character in this, I could be wrong. I don't know how Oprah is off camera, but she don't <laughs> seem like the type that would play in charge all the time. Maybe with Gail. I was going to say, that's why with. she went and got Gail. Come on now. <laughs> but I, I'm saying though, the thing is, is like with us, we have to understand that it's okay to have a humble man who's okay with being a teacher or being a manager at a grocery store because, I mean, he, he he likes what he does. He enjoys it. At least he's or doing a man something. Who, exactly. But you don't go get no 33-year-old rapper who still releasing mixtapes, who um, does studio time with his homeboys all Selling night. Selling CDs and, outside of Smith's. And ain't bringing in no, no income. CDs, MP3s. That part. DVDs. That, that part. <laughs> so you got to leave those alone. But that doesn't mean... Get rid of the regular guy. The regular guys are sometimes the good guys. You get you a man in power. Sometimes that comes with a lot. And but with they everything, say the regular that, guys. Sometimes the regular guys are just as bad. They got an ego. They feel some type of way. They they have. You got to find somebody with not that many insecurities. That should be something that we look for when we go on dates. You go on dates. Yeah. Okay. You go for dinner and you know go drinks and he picks up the tab. Try something. Who, who you, picks you up, pick the up the tab? I was going to say, who picks up the I'm tab saying, when you're successful? When you're a successful woman, just try it. See how he responds mm, to you saying, like you know what? Though. Let me get this one. And if he seems okay with it, then he may be secure enough to be like, all right, she wants to take care of the tab. That's cool. But my thing is, is are you okay with him allowing you to pick up the right, tab? Right. Because some people, some women, especially successful women, feel like, okay, well... 
especially when they're dealing with men who are not on the same stature and societal status, you know, economical, financial. But I think that that if we played it that way, we would both see who had the insecurities because the woman would be insecure if he allowed her to do it. She would feel some kind of way. So don't. Because this is, this have, is you're playing chess, zuns. not checkers. We're not having zuns in 2018. You've seen that post? Like, <laughs> if you're taking care of him, pay him for his bills, doing all that, that's not your zaddy. That's your zun. But the thing no is, is, this is this is your first date. And you need him to know what type of woman you are. Yes. And you need to know if he can handle the type of woman you are. So go somewhere simple. Go for appetizers and a few drinks. Say, so you know what? I had such a great time. Let me go ahead and pick up the tab this go around. And if he, you know, he may fight it if he got a little, like I said, that insecurity, that man, that pride, it has to rise up. Go ahead and let him, you know, if he battles it out, then you know where he stands. And if he can handle somebody like you, because you may pick up the tab a lot if you're making six, seven figures and he's making five. But you don't think at some point she's going to get tired of always picking up? It depends on it depends on the woman. I love treating I've always been that way. So you don't ever feel like as a successful woman, you need somebody to to match your swag, compliment your hustle. But the thing is, is match it how? Because just because he's not making as many figures as me in his hustle, is he working as hard as me? Is he getting up bright and early just like I'm getting up bright and early? Is he changing somebody's life just like I'm changing somebody's life? Because teachers don't get paid shit. But when they go to work, they're changing lives. So are we okay with the lack of financial support? Because like we said, we're speaking about financially independent women, so they don't really need that. Exactly. But, I mean, they're looking, let's just be real. She and you get tired of picking up the tab all the time, baby. Can you pay for this meal, please? Okay, so if you want him to pay for the meal, don't go to the five-star restaurant. Understand your man's pockets. Yeah. If you don't want to have our bank account and you want to have his and hers, then boo-boo don't pick the restaurant where your just your steak is going to be two hundred dollars not your sides yeah because you know what type of work your baby husband does. Got that. so don't make him okay. feel insecure by picking this place y'all hear that tell knowledge. him you want to go eat at yard house or something we need say, to baby, say knowledge no more we gonna start saying truth <laughs> i'm just saying be like you know what baby i want to go to yard house tonight or i ain't had chilies in a long you time let's go to chilies and you nice can still have, menu. and you can make him feel like a boss honey five dollars drinks he might appetizers. spend a hundred dollars do you know how much stuff y'all can get for a hundred dollars at chilies that's how you y'all gotta out. play the game right i'm telling y'all it's chestnut <laughs> checkers i'm just saying you have to come to an, a common understanding but also men Don't take advantage of the woman that you have or women don't take advantage of the men that you have or however, women and women, men and men, however, in your relationship, whoever is the one that is bringing in more, don't take advantage of that situation. Still live beyond your means, if that makes sense. Don't go out and spend five hundred dollars at the club with your friends because, you know, boo gonna help you pay this credit card bill off. Don't do that. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Don't don't do that because that's being a, a that's zun. Part of taking, Ain't that what that's you part said? Of taking advantage. <laughs> that, that's a zun. <laughs> oh, hashtag zun. Twenty eighteen. <laughs> Hilarious. So, if we're gonna go this route and we're dating and we're picking up the tab, that kind of goes back to trading in the power of the pussy for I like to call it powerful pussies is what we are in this 2018. It used to be, you know, it was all sex. You used your sexuality to get what you want. Right. And now women are more empowered. And instead of, like, using the power of the pussy, we are we are powerful in ourselves, you know, and right. we're owning and stepping into that greatness. Right. So, as so, I feel like a lot of women are becoming more empowered in their sexuality. So that's what we find what we were talking about earlier, especially among singles, because it's so complicated to get into these relationships. And we have all these insecurities that both parties are dealing with. You think that's why promiscuity is on the rampage a lot in in business women in society? You know, it's more about instant gratification and fulfillment. I call it sexual freedom. Okay. And I just feel like we finally are owning it. Men have been owning it for a long time. But how do they feel about it? With the with successful women now owning our own sexuality. Women do it a little differently, though. Now, let me tell you about a, a successful woman who's out there just being sexually free. Nine times out of ten, you won't even know. She could probably have a hundred bodies. 
But when she walks into a room, nobody's going to look at her and be like, that lady got a hundred bodies because she picks people that shut the fuck up. She may even pay this person to shut the fuck up, especially if she has a big name. Gigolos are real. They're real life. And there are especially sugar mamas. There are successful women that pay their their sons, as you said, (laughs) to give them that that gratification and then move on. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's sad in a sense that the world has become this to where sex is really just like a like, did I take my daily vitamin today? No, let me go ahead and go take my vitamin. <laughs> like, I yes. mean, it, it shouldn't be that it should be to where you have that one person to give you that. But I mean, I don't know. You think I don't, time I don't, has I don't a lot them. to do with it in the business world? Because I find that a lot of successful women are presented with the question, like, for instance, I have a friend, very close friend of mine. She has two businesses and she's single. And she says she's always presented with the question, how do you find time to date? So that's where that freeness comes in because mm-hmm. you may not have time to dedicate to this one person, but you have these needs. And they can be met quickly. So how but- do you find how do you find how how would you suggest that successful women balance the time? between the business and the dating. It has to be a priority for them. There are some successful women that dating is not a priority. Making it to the position they want to make it to. Yeah. That's their priority. And men do it all the time. Yeah. So why not let these women do what they need to do when they make it to that position? And then sometimes with us though, we feel like our our clock is ticking. And if I don't get married at this time, or if I don't have babies by this time, we get so much pressure. Even in the business world, I think business women are shying away from that mentality more so. And hence you see the evolution of women freezing their eggs now and Mm -hmm. doing more of that. So they can continue with their desires and their dreams. But even with that, they're still pressured because they got these doctors telling them, well, you know, you you're, you're 33. Well, I mean, you know, your body changes when you're 36, 36. But Higher I'm here to tell y'all, um, Miss Diana Ross carried a baby um, for her daughter and she's old. What about Janet Jackson? Old ass. Exactly. So <laughs> all I'm going to say to my women, your time clock and we don't normally get spiritual on here, but your time clock is up to the most it's high. Your, and it's your so time. Don't, you do don't things feel on your time. rushed. Don't feel like you got, if you want to be a little old thought, thought, do your thing. <laughs> Just keep it discreet. If you somebody grandma, don't let your grandkids know you out there thoughting and bopping. But I mean, just, just do it how you feel. I mean, y'all know I'm all for sexual freedom, but if love is really what you want, you have to find time for it. If it's one of your priorities, you, you if you got multiple businesses, you may have to treat it like a business. So I spend this many hours on this business. I spend this many hours on this one. Now my love business. I need time for this. Yeah. So pencil it in. Because Plan a relationship it. is like a business still. You, you know, you have to put that same effort and ambition into it. You got to work for it. And that's another issue from when I was doing my research. You know, I like to do my research. Um, men, men have, um, issues. It says successful men on the contrary, run into issues with treating relationships like a business and even women, successful women run into it because realistically, when you're in a relationship, your partner doesn't want another boss or even another mother or father at that, you know? They're coming Sometimes for a Sometimes they do want a zaddy, I'm just saying, but go ahead. Well, you know, that's zaddy, <laughs> that's just in the room, like, own it, zaddy, mom, no, with mommy, was it zami? Oh, I hate that. Don't call me, <laughs> no, that I don't want to be. <laughs> no, ma'am. <laughs> that sounds horrible. But, you know, it, it, it's happening. So, it, it's all in balancing and knowing how to Step out of that that position of a boss when it comes to your relationship and being intimate and and change that, knowing how to balance all of that time, intimacy and business. So with that, my suggestion, y'all know, I always go back to sex. If you feel like you have that woman that is constantly on boss mode, whether she's in the kitchen cooking or telling you something about the house or just in her own businesses, your time to be the boss is in the bedroom. Hey. Take over. Oh, no. Take control. I and love that. the thing is with women, 
we like the dominance. I mean, I'm a very dominant woman. Anybody who knows me knows this about me. But in the bedroom, you take control. I'm like, oh, let me find out. <laughs> I'm feeling like a little girl right now. Let me go ahead and just stop being so mean to him and tell him my, you know, tell him my tone. I put my attitude away. Yeah. That's that, you know, the perfect drug for, you know, that bossy attitude. A lot of successful women are looking for that also. They want a man or a woman, a partner to step up. Absolutely. And own it. And it, like you said, if you're not a boss in life, be a boss in the bedroom and we might be. And then let's, let's reverse it. My women who have their their men or their woman partner who's out there and they're the boss in the real world and they're coming home and they're trying to, you know, take charge and run ship and the kids should do this and the house should be like this. When y'all get into that bedroom, remind him or her who's boss. Hey. That's the perfect time to do it. All I'm going to say is whips and chains and cuffs are fun. But um, <laughs> <laughs> you can take control. Yes. Sex, definitely. People try to brush it under the rug like it's not important. It is. And um, it's one of the things that keeps me going Well, in what life. they say, work hard, play hard. Yes, and play that's harder. Part of, that's good play. Yeah, that's, that's kind of play real good need. play. But that's also, women, why a lot of you guys get lonely and why, I mean, I don't mind it because my toy sales are up, but you have to stop trying to replace men <laughs> with the vibrator. Vibrators are cool for, for a little while, but I, I, I was reading some, some studies. They don't feel insecure. You ain't got to compete with them. They there when you need them. Are they always there when you need them? Unless the, well, you know, you, we got you, the they, ain't got no, they ain't got no shoulders to cry on. Okay. And they don't have that motivational speech to give you when you're feeling defeated and okay. ain't nobody else in your corner. Touche. I'm Touché. just saying, you know, I love my toys, but I love my partner. Good point. So Good point. when your partner's getting on your nerves, absolutely do your thing. I have a whole treasure chest. I'm just saying. I don't mind it at all. But a lot of women are using that to replace their need for the actual physical. Yeah. yeah. And man, y'all doing it too. I see them little pocket pussies in the store. That's just a mess. <laughs> but <laughs> we ain't even go go there. But go y'all doing there. it too. I'm not. I even wonder if just lesbians put that on get the women. little pocket pussies too. Like you, you got a craving for some coochie, so you just buy one. And, and, but no. it tastes like rubber, right? Or whatever. Oh. Is, what I, is it oh, made I out of? No, I don't know. I don't know. That, that, <laughs> you're, you, that that new feel, real feel stuff. That you know they got the, the little Lord. dildos and the dicks for them too. <clears throat> Okay, let's let's bring it back. So, you know I like my <laughs> stats as we get ready to, to, to wrap this up here. Um, again, you know I do my research. So, I was looking at, I think it was Miami Matchmaker. No, matchmakingmiami.com. Since, you know, that's a big city, a lot of bosses out there. I wanted to see, you know, common statistics on dating and success in the city. So, according to this site, the top four mistakes that successful people make in dating is one being too picky. We absolutely touched on that. Mm -hmm. um, number two, bad or off-putting behavior. Like you're screening your potential suitor, like the police, you're interrogating them, how much you make, what you do, what can you do for me? What are your goals? That's pretty off-putting. And that goes back to, you know, being bossy and bossing them around and nagging and nitpicking. Nobody wants enough. Another people, especially if you're a boss yourself, you fired your boss. So you're not looking for another one at home, let alone in your this relationship. Um, number three, screening out men or women who don't make as much as them. And then number four, being too busy. Check that out. I think if I was, if I was single in this day and age doing all the things that I'm doing, I don't think I would have time to date. And I don't think at this point it would be a priority to me, especially yeah. because I'm at the beginning Trying to build stages. And do so much, yeah, yeah. I I don't can't focus. Mm -mm. Like, and it I wouldn't want to cheat someone on my else. Nerves. I wouldn't want to cheat you or myself out of this giving you my all in this relationship. Exactly. So. And then you would keep coming to me like wanting more, and then I would just be like, back off. Like, let's just end it completely. Like, going about your business, I'm going about mine. <laughs> so I I can understand why the women don't really make time nor have time especially if they're building and, and some women don't know to how to stop building some men keep don't going, know how to stop keep building keep going keep going Add but women feel Add like we plate. just got to go a little bit harder we can take it all on we and do. the thing we is we take is, on that superwoman complex and we got to we got to put her put the cape away sometimes yeah and be that soft meek woman 
because that is us. We do still have that. We are strong. We're the strongest beings on the planet. But you can absolutely turn that off. It's okay. And it's a completely different feeling of self-fulfillment and gratification. You know, having that love and that partner, that person you can turn to who understands you, who's supporting you, who's going hard for you. And... Who going to give you that work before you go to sleep? Boss Y'all know I keep trying to bring, I got to bring it in because, I mean, we're talking about pillow talk. So <laughs> I need y'all to remember that even with everything that we're saying, sex is definitely get it in a, there. a primary factor. Get it in there. It'll help release that tension you got in your shoulders, the migraines you're getting because you're stressed about work. All of that. It's better than Tylenol, baby. All That's that. not, It's better than Excedrin, honey. Work it out. All of that. So <laughs> if you are a successful single business male or female out there looking for love, here's where you may want to be. Um, 2017 study for the best and worst cities for singles. Number one, top city, San Francisco. Number two, Atlanta. Number three, L.A. Four, Denver. Five, San Diego. Followed by Seattle, Washington, Portland, Minneapolis, and then top ten, Portland. So I know you like Oregon and Portland. I'm not looking for love. I know you're not, (laughs) but you can. It's a beautiful area. I saw your pictures. If y'all try to get there, it's absolutely beautiful. The air is beautiful. The water tastes good. Like you know, that's big because Las Vegas water tastes air. Tastes good. Yep. I don't know if I could live there though. But <laughs> we we not looking for love. We're helping We're those who are. So if you're trying to trying to find love, you're not finding success San in your Francisco city. San Francisco seems this like is a great city. where you may want to be, especially if you're gay. Shout out to my yes, LGBT that's what I'm squad. saying. San Francisco is for everybody: the yeah. gay love, the straight love, the I love everybody love. So I'm gonna give my votes to San Francisco, y'all. Those who take my advice, if you are gonna go, that's the place I would pick after all the places she named. Don't go to Atlanta. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys, we do appreciate you taking the time and we're happy to be back. Yes. We have some great things in store for you. And just know that our season, um, what is a season two? Season two. We're going to have some Twice great topics. Twice as nice. Absolutely. We're going to do a little pillow talk, but we're more so going to educate you. And that's the whole basis behind the show. It's going to be fun, though. It's definitely. Y'all yeah, know you're going to have it. fun with us. But we appreciate you all listening. And until next time, it's your girl, Truth. And I'm Mrs. Jackson. Bye, y'all.